Hi, welcome to another IGCSC physics video. In this video, we're looking at section 2.2, which is evaporation. So let's begin talking about the general concept of evaporation. When we think about evaporation, we think of a liquid that transforms from a liquid state into a gaseous state. You may have also heard of evaporation in a general term, such as drying. And in the general term of drying, there are many examples. So if I had this glass of water and I were to spill some water on this whiteboard right now, then after some while that water would evaporate or it would dry off and it would just disappear. Another example could be some water that may have been spilled on a road and eventually that water will evaporate as it gains energy from the sunlight. Another general example of evaporation in terms of drying could be your sweater outside in your balcony on which layers of water would slowly decrease as it gains heat and eventually your sweater would just dry off. So these were all just basic examples of what evaporation could be and the term drying is a general term for evaporation which we commonly use. However, let's think of a scientific definition for evaporation. Specifically when you look at the particles in the liquid that evaporates into the gaseous state. So one scientific definition of evaporation could be the escape of the more energetic particles from the surface of a liquid. So if I had a liquid here, which I had spilled on the road earlier, then eventually the particles in this liquid would turn into gas. So if we specifically zoom to this section of this liquid, and we look at the particles in this area which are not to scale, keep in mind, we will see that the particles on the top of the surface will have more kinetic energy than the particles that are at the bottom of the surface. So the particles on the surface of the liquid have more kinetic energy, meaning that the intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules that are on top of this liquid are less as compared to those at the bottom of this liquid. So the four particles that I have up here have more kinetic energy than all these particles of this liquid that are stacked on the surface. As the particles on the surface of this liquid gain the thermal energy or the light energy that is coming from the sun, these particles will gain kinetic energy and their intermolecular forces of attraction will be less, so therefore they will be able to escape from the surface more easily than the particles that are under the surface of this liquid. Now an interesting question to ask about this scenario is that if the energetic particles of this liquid escape and there are only less energetic particles remaining on the surface and below the surface of the liquid, how will the temperature of this liquid be affected? Think about it, will it remain the same, will it decrease or will it increase if the more energetic particles escape from the surface? The answer to this question is that if more high energetic particles escape from the surface of the liquid such as these four particles and more that will escape as these particles gain energy from the sunlight, then there will be fewer high energy particles remaining and more concentrated lower energy particles, which will therefore decrease the average temperature of this liquid. And we know that if the average kinetic energy of these particles decreases, which it does in this case as the higher energetic particles escape, then because of the lower average kinetic energy of these particles, the temperature of these particles will also decrease. We haven't looked at what temperature really is right now, but in general terms, we can say that the temperature might decrease, say if this was 28 degrees Celsius, then it would decrease to such as 26 degrees Celsius. But I will talk about in detail what temperature really is in my future videos. So now that we understand the cooling effect of evaporation on the liquid that we had earlier over here, let's make a graph on how the number of particles varies with the kinetic energy of these particles before we did the evaporation and after the evaporation experiment. When making the graph of the number of particles versus the kinetic energy of the particles, before we do the evaporation, we will represent the graph with the red marker. So our graph for the before evaporation experiment will start at this point. We know that we can't start at this origin because there's always some kinetic energy in the particles, no matter how low the average temperature of the system is. And as we increase the kinetic energy of the particles, the number of particles will also increase because more particles will have greater kinetic energy in the beginning. So this will look like a bell curve. And there will be a point when only few particles will have this much kinetic energy, which will be in the middle. And that will be the maximal point of the number of particles. So the most particles will have the kinetic energy that will be the median of the system. 
and then eventually the particles will decrease as the kinetic energy decreases because less and less particles will have increasing kinetic energy as we pass the median mark. And this will eventually come down to the axis of kinetic energy, which tells us that this particle has the greatest kinetic energy. And in fact, at this point, we're approaching number of particles, which is zero because it's approaching the x-axis. And this will be the last particle with the greatest kinetic energy of the system. So by looking at the curve, we can say that the particles behind the median have less kinetic energy and we can say that the kinetic energy interval from here to here will consist of the highest number of particles because the middle kinetic energy will consist of the highest particles. And as we move further into the higher kinetic energies, the number of particles will decrease as less particles will have greater kinetic energies until eventually we approach the particle with the greatest kinetic energy and that will be the only particle. Now we will draw the second curve in blue which will denote how the kinetic energy of the particles and the number of particles varies after the evaporation has been done. So let's say that the temperature difference was from 28 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. We know that if you have a temperature drop then the average kinetic energy of the particles has decreased as we described in this statement. So again this time we will start over here and we know that we're going to follow the bell curve pattern again as we increase the kinetic energy of the particles, so will the number of particles. Now I want you guys to make an educated guess on whether the curve will surpass this height that I have on this red curve, or will it be lower than this curve, or will it be the same height as this curve? Well, the answer to that question is it's going to be lower than this curve because we know that the average kinetic energy of the particles has decreased. So therefore this peak is going to be lower than the red peak and eventually the particles with the greatest kinetic energy will be less than the red curve because more energetic particles will have escaped from the system, leaving us with the lower energetic particles. So therefore the greatest energetic particle will lie behind the red one. And again, we can see that the range of particles with the median kinetic energy will lie over here and the peak, the greatest number of particles will have a kinetic energy which lies on this line. Now the final thing that I'm going to talk about is the cooling effect and its application in taking hot showers. So when you take a hot shower, the water droplets on your hand will eventually evaporate as they gain kinetic energy from a heat source such as a light bulb or if you're in a warmer environment. Now we know that as these high energetic particles in these droplets evaporate, there will be fewer higher energetic particles on your skin and therefore more concentrated lower energetic particles which may even be the atoms and molecules in your skin and therefore the average temperature of your skin will decrease. And this explains why after taking a hot shower and as the water droplets on your skin evaporate you suddenly feel cold and maybe even shiver. And this is it for section 2.2 part 1. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and you now understand the concept of evaporation not only in general terms and everyday terms that we use such as drying but also the scientific terms and understandings. Subscribe for more future videos and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.